So, if you ask someone if they're anxious and they score high, say on a scale of 1 to 7, they're also likely to score high on another item that says that they're sad. And it turns out that negative emotions clump together, and so that people who experience more of one negative emotion have a propensity to experience more of all of them. There's another dimension called agreeableness. And agreeable people are self-sacrificing, compassionate, and polite. If you're dealing with an agreeable person, they don't like conflict. They care for other people. Um, if you're dealing with an agreeable person, they're likely to put your concerns ahead of theirs. They're non-competitive and cooperative. Uh, it's a dimension where women are women score more highly than men on agreeableness across cultures, including those cultures where the largest steps have been taken towards producing an egalitarian social circumstance like Scandinavia. Actually, the gender differences in personality there are larger than they are anywhere else. Um, another trait is conscientiousness. Conscientiousness is an excellent trait if you want to do well in, in school and in work, especially if you're a manager and administrator. I can't say we understand a lot about conscientiousness, although it, it reliably emerges from factor analytic studies of adjective groups across different countries. Conscientious people are diligent, industrious, and orderly. Their orderliness tilts them towards political conservatism, by the way, because it turns out that your inbuilt temperament, your inbuilt personality, which constitutes a set of filters through which you view the world, also alters the manner in which you process information and influences the way that you vote. And so you might say, and I, I do believe that this is true, our, we've been doing a lot of research on this as of late. The more accurate a measure you take of someone's political beliefs, the more you find that personality is what's predicting them.